Have you ever been so lost in your work that you lose all sense of time? Hours pass like minutes and your worries and everything else just drifts away. You're completely in the zone and focused on the task in front of you. I found that feeling for the first time making my way down the side of the mountain. I was skiing and just completely lost myself in the mountains where I was and the act of skiing itself. But later I found it again in my work while I was writing. Um, Words just kind of came to me as my fingers went across the keyboard, but that doesn't always happen. What I'm talking about is flow state. So what is flow state? I want to read you guys a definition by one of the pioneers of this concept. And his name, I hope I don't butcher it here, is Maheli Szentmilai. I'm not sure if I said that right. I'm going to try that name again. Maheli Csikszentmihalyi. I hope that's better that time. Here is his definition. It's a state of concentration so focused that it amounts to absolute absorption in an activity. Now, I hope you've experienced this before and you can relate, but if not, and even if so, let's go over a couple of the benefits. It increases happiness and you get outside your everyday routine. It increases focus and concentration. Flow state also um, ties you into intrinsic motivation, the reason why you're doing the work. And it also provides clarity on what you're doing. Okay, so let's get into what causes flow state. I want to go over both the physiological and the psychological causes so we can get a better understanding of these and hopefully be able to create that state for ourselves because there are so many benefits to it. Okay, first let's start with the psychological factors that are going on. The first that came up in scientific studies that I looked at was having clear goals and feedback on your work. Having well-defined and challenging goals as well as immediate feedback on your progress can help you enter that flow state. So how can we create that? Well, there's a couple of ways. Improving processes and systems. This can involve streamlining something that you're doing, possibly automating something inside of your business that you're doing over and over and over again, Um, investing in technology to increase efficiency and productivity. Let me give you a really specific example of something that I do inside of my business And this relates to social media. So I post regularly on social media. If you're following me, thank you. But what I do at the end of each week, I take a look at the analytics of the sites that I'm posting on and see which post performed the best. And I really try to analyze that and think about if it was a video, like what caused people to connect with that video, if it was a a static post, maybe a text post, what was driving the connection with that quote. And then I take those and I repeat those. I will uh, repurpose them. (laughs) That's the word I'm looking for. But also try to learn from, from what I'm doing. And if you want to take it even a step above, whatever you're working on, whether it's increasing your productivity or Um, posting better videos on YouTube, you can hire a coach and somebody that actually can work one-on-one with you. You go out and do the work and then you get immediate feedback on how you're performing. Okay, another psychological factor is concentration. Flow has to have a deep sense of concentration and one of the best ways to get there is by silencing all of the distractions. I've talked about this a lot of times. I can link to a couple of resources down below on excellent ways to silence distractions, but I'm gonna give you one like immediate example. And that was while I was writing the outline for this video, I was also transcribing a presentation I had on Flow so that I could use that in my talk. And I took my phone and had it going in the other room, but I could still kind of hear it in the background as I was trying to write my outline. 
So one thing I love to use to silence um, distractions like inside of my environment is the Calm app. The Calm app actually has some music. Um, there's one called Flow and I use that and I just kind of crank that up and that's all I could hear and it silenced the transcription that was going on in my phone in the other room. So just find ways to really create that uh, environment for focus that you're in the environment that you're working in. Another psychological factor is a sense of control over what you're doing. And people in a flow state have a feeling of control, a sense of mastery over what they're doing. In fact, the our friend Mihaly in his book says that you have to have at least 10 years of experience in a specific field before you can even reach flow state. I don't know that I agree with him. He's the expert, so I'm going to default to that. But um, you do, it, it's not like you can go out and try something you've never done before. I, I use the example of kayaking. Like, I've never been in a kayak. If I was all of a sudden about to like take a kayak out and paddle down the river, I'm not going to reach flow state because there's just such a learning curve there that there's no way I'm going to have any sense of control over what I'm doing. The next one I want to talk about is the law, the loss of consciousness. You get that sense of like your self absorption is completely gone. You're, you're completely absorbed in what you're doing and your sense of self has left you. So all of your worries and concerns seem to float away. I really experienced this the most um, on that ski slope. And um, there is data to prove that the more time you spend in flow, the easier it is to get into that state. But I have to caution you a little bit here because this is where flow can actually get, um, can cause some problems because it be can become addictive. We love it so much because it's, you know, almost like a drug, it, you take it and all of your worries go away. Well, you want to reach that state again and again and again. And if I spent all day skiing, I wouldn't get any of my work done. I wouldn't be able to help you guys. So um, yeah, definitely gets into that state of self-consciousness. Um, but you have to be careful with that one. Another one, another psychological factor is a sense of intrinsic motivation. So the reason it's a sense of enjoyment, a sense of motivation for what you're doing. As parents, I think we have an advantage here on um, tying into that intrinsic motivation, right? Because a lot of times we do stuff for our kids because we are so motivated and with a sense of love and caring for what we're doing. Um, so you know what it feels like to be intrinsically motivated. So you have to find that thread of connection in whatever task you're doing and, and pull that out and tease that out. Okay, let's talk about the physiological factors that are going on when you are in flow state. The first is an increase in the hormones norepinephrine and adrenaline. And these are the hormones that help us focus and also decreases your pain perception. Funny story here, so skiing, I keep going back to the story and that's where I experience flow. I actually have a condition called Renaud's disease. So I have um, issues with circulation. So my hands and feet are always cold. Um, but skiing, oftentimes I'm in temperatures well below freezing and I do have some heated gloves and some heated boots that help with this. But when I reach that flow state in skiing, it's unbelievable that I can withstand these freezing cold temperatures for as long as I do, because I live here in Northern California. It's warm here most of the time. And I sit with a space heater next to me while I'm at my desk, but I can endure the pain of these freezing cold temperatures because of flow state, I believe. Another is a decrease in cortisol. So those are our stress hormones. Also an elevated heart rate. Our heart beats a little bit faster when we're in flow. 
There is an increase in oxygen, which um, that helps with your brain and focus, getting more oxygen up to your brain. And finally, there's changes in what's called the default mode network in our brain. So the default mode network in your brain is kind of like the boss of your brain, right? When you're going through your typical workday and you're thinking about your kids' schedules and that thing you forgot to do and, oh my gosh, what am I gonna make for dinner? All of this, all of these things, that's the default mode network constantly bringing your brain back to those thoughts. Well, when you're in flow, that boss goes silent and you really get into the moment of what you're doing, doing really get into the present moment and can truly enjoy what, what you're working on because that boss has taken the day off. Okay, another important factor when going into flow is the relationship between challenge and skill. And the best moments usually occur where, when you're voluntarily pushing yourself to reach a certain goal or to accomplish something. And as creatives and entrepreneurs, we are very likely to put ourselves in challenging situations, right? Something that we are, we're not very familiar with. It's a new, it's a new thing. Um, the component that is missing often is the skill. It's something that we need to develop further and get more comfortable with, right? Because we have to have a level of mastery before we can reach flow. So if you are struggling a bit to get into flow in a specific project, look at the skills that are lacking and maybe take some time to develop those skills and you will find more and more you will be able to get into this idyllic flow state inside of your work and inside of your business. Hey, okay, we talked about what causes a flow state, but let's get into some more ideas and tips on how to achieve flow. And the first is to set clear goals. You guys, I know you know I talk about this again and again, and actually I have a whole video about how I achieve goals and I will link it down below. But you wanna make sure that you're setting achievable yet challenging goals. It's kind of this sweet spot. It's not too easy, it's not too hard. Another way to stay on top of your goals is by creating a reset routine in your day. I have a whole video training on this and I'll link it down below as well, but that will create the habit of constantly checking in with your goals and making sure that they're part of your daily progress. The next is to focus on the present moment. This is easy to say, but so much harder to do. And that goes back to silencing distractions, right? Like turning off um, our notifications and creating that work, that environment for focus wherever you're doing the work you wanna do. So whether it be inside of your office, maybe it's out on the ski slope, maybe it's, um, you know, painting. What sort of environment do you need to create for yourself to really get into that state of flow? And remember, the more you get into flow, the more likely it is to happen more often. The next is to find the right level of challenge. And this can be hard when we're working in a silo. This really helps when we have others around us and we're working in some sort of like accountability group or within um, a corporation or a larger organization because we can see others that are a few steps ahead of us. Um, choose activities that are challenging enough to engage you, but not so much that will overwhelm you. And surround yourself with people that will call you out on it. Another excellent technique, and um, Michael Phelps is a, a really good example of that if you know anything about his story, is the idea of using visualization. So visualize yourself actually doing the work before you do the work. So imagine what um, an excellent run down a ski slope would look like. Imagine what filming that video content and nailing it, what would that look like before you actually do it? 
and that will help you get into a flow state. Practicing mindfulness. So another, you know, silencing those voices we have going on in our head. Uh, I do a daily meditation and that really helps me uh, notice those distracting thoughts as they come up because I'm consciously like building that muscle day after day after day after day. But you can also focus on your breathing. Just do some breathing exercises to really get yourself into a focused state before you start the work. And that's more likely to get flow to happen. The next trick is to get into a rhythm. So identify like a rhythm in your day. And this can be at something like a morning routine or an evening routine or a process that you have for creating whatever you're working on, or possibly if it's like a sport, maybe it's an, even a way that you get ready before you go and become active. So my son, for example, he loves soccer. Whenever we're on our way to like a big tournament or a big match, he watches soccer videos on his phone on the way there and really gets him fired up. So just find a way to create a routine that that gets that flow, gets yourself into that flow state. Next is surround yourself with supportive people. Um, and those that are going to give you feedback in a, in a way that is constructive, because that is one of the um, criteria for getting into flow is getting that immediate feedback. So people that can provide it to you in a way that's supportive, it might not be your closest friends and family. Maybe it needs to be colleagues that are supportive of the journey that you're on. Of course, we have to talk about reward. Um, I always talk about celebrating wins, but if you create if you find yourself getting into flow after that has happened, reward yourself a little bit. Um, maybe it's, you know, a little bit more time with friends and family. Maybe it's a little bit of self-care. But by rewarding that behavior, you're more likely to get into it. Again, it's just like a kid, just like a toddler, right? Here's the little treat and it's going to motivate you and your brain to get into that flow state. I do have an entire blog post that I created about um, how mompreneurs can incorporate flow into their daily routine, and I will link it down below if you guys want to go check that out and get a few more ideas. So, and don't forget, self-care, time management are super, super important to um, getting into a flow state. I know your days are full and you don't have a lot of time. So really creating flow and getting really absorbed and you'll get more enjoyment out of life too. You'll get more done and you'll get more enjoyment out of it. Just beware of becoming so absorbed in flow that you don't get anything else done. We still have to take care of our businesses and our kiddos and you know ourselves, all of that. But Okay, so we talked about what flow is. We talked about what causes flow, flow state, both the psychological and the physiological aspects. I gave you some tips on how to create more flow in your life. I would love for you guys to try those out and get back to me and let me know what works for you or maybe even what doesn't work for you. And I do have a video that I recorded last week and I talked about how to create a roadmap for life and using flow as an alternative for creating that roadmap. So I will see you over there. Make it a great day.